This is the Iceco VL60 Pro. This is my go-to favorite fridge. You guys have seen this a bunch on the channel in the past. This is a reliable, efficient fridge with a lot of really good standout features. Well, Iceco just released the smallest version of the VL Pro series. This is the Iceco VL35 Pro. Now, both of these have C-Cop compressors in them with a five-year warranty, but how does the smaller model stack up against my favorite fridge? So in this video, we're gonna break down the standout features for the Iceco VL35 Pro, and I have over 120 hours of tests on this fridge to determine the actual power usage numbers and the temperature accuracy. Before breaking all that down, I kinda of wanna look inside to see what compressor they're using. So let's go ahead and take a look. So with all the screws and the covers removed, let's go ahead and remove the compressor panel. So right here you have the back of the control board or the LCD screen. You have your DC power input here with a 15 amp inline fuse. So if you ever had power plugged in here and the fridge wasn't turning on, you could always check this fuse. You also have your AC input right here and this all goes back to the fridge controller board. So it's good to see that this does have a C-COP compressor in it as advertised, it's the BD35F. This is a very efficient and reliable compressor. And then here is a closer shot of the controller board. Now zooming out a bit, you can see the compressor does have rubber isolators to help with vibration. You also have this foam insulator piece that separates the condenser coil from the compressor. There's also a fan here that pulls air through this way to cool off the condenser coil and the compressor. Now looking at the actual build quality, everything inside is metal. So this is a very durable design for a fridge. So we got the fridge put back together. I've never been disappointed with the build quality on Iceco fridges. Now the main standout feature, my favorite feature of the VL Pro series is the lid design. For example, you can open it on one side, you can close it, you can access it on the other side, or you can completely just remove the lid. Now this is a thick insulated lid, it has a rubber gasket, so you get a really good seal, but man, this is just such a good lid design. You can access it from multiple sides, so you don't really have to worry about where the fridge is oriented. So definitely one of my favorite features about the VL35 Pro. So let's go ahead and take a look inside the fridge. So the first thing you'll notice, this is a single zone, meaning that you have one temperature that you set. It is a chest style design, meaning it's just completely open. So the bottom is where the colder air is gonna sit, and then you'll have a slightly warmer temperature on that shelf. Now this does include a basket, so you can easily remove the food. If you have a spill, you can wipe it up. And there is an included drain plug down in the bottom. Now I really like the Iceco design because they have an exposed temperature sensor, so you get a really accurate reading. And it's in the middle of the fridge, so you get an average of the high and low temperatures on the inside. There is an LED light that is powered on whenever you open up the lid of the fridge so you can see things in the dark. So overall, it's a very simple design, but it works really well. Now I've gone ahead and put some food and drink inside the fridge for reference. For capacity, it's rated at 37 quarts or 35 liters. And just as a reminder, this is a single zone fridge or freezer. You can set it anywhere from 50 degrees Fahrenheit all the way down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. Now for reference of size, you can see I have a gallon of milk here. So you can see how much space that takes up. I have two soda cans stacked on top of each other. A third soda can will not fit because you can't close the lid. A half gallon of milk here and a half gallon of ice cream. Up on the shelf, I've had to lay these on their side because they are too tall to sit vertically. So keep in mind, if you wanna have soda up there, you will have to lay it on its side. Now I do feel this is great for uh, two people for a medium sized trip, or if you're a single person wanting to use this fridge, you could probably go a week with refrigerated goods inside. So let's go ahead and break down some of the features on the outside of the fridge. Now the entire fridge is metal, um, except for the lid and you have these bumpers on the corner and the sides, just kind of protect it from being dented. Now you have two large handles, one on each side. They are built of this durable plastic and they have this nice metal grip. Just be aware these are removable, so you can remove them uh, to save on space for the fridge. Now on this side you have your compressor, so you have your exhaust on this side, you have your intake on this side, and down here we have the control panel, so let's do a demo of how to control the fridge. So this is the control panel for the VL35 Pro. If you want to turn it on, you just push the power button for a few seconds. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Now this red light indicates that the compressor is turning on or is running. Right here you have your internal temperature of the fridge. And then to adjust the temperature set point, you can push up or down on these plus or minus buttons. I like having this fridge set at 36 degrees. 
Now to adjust the speed of the compressor, you can go between max or eco mode. Eco mode pulls around 34 watts of power when it's running, and I recommend having this set to eco mode. If you set it to max mode, it pulls more wattage, but it does cool down the inside of the fridge a little bit faster. So if you're just wanting to cool it down really fast, you can set it to max mode. So over here, you have your battery monitor settings. What this does is it watches the input voltage. And so if you're running this off a car battery, I recommend having this set to high or medium so that you don't kill your starter battery. But if you're running off a standalone battery or a power station, you can set this to low and you never have to worry about it. Now this fridge does have an advanced menu where you can adjust the temperature compensation. So say it's showing 61 degrees inside the fridge, but the fridge is really like 55 degrees or maybe 70 degrees. It's off from what the display is showing. So to get to that menu, what you're gonna do is while the compressor is running, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna push the positive, negative, and setting button all at the same time, and you're gonna hold them down. Now, once you hold them down for a while, you get to this special menu where it's F1, F2, and F3. Now you wanna take note of default values. So F1 is negative one for me, F2 is zero, and F3 is zero. Now just keep in mind, this might be different for each fridge, now I've found that when adjusting the F2 value, it makes the biggest difference and you only wanna go up one or down one, run the fridge for 12 hours and see what happens. So you do have to experiment a bit with this, but that's how you get to the menu. Now down here, you have your power inputs to keep the fridge running. So over here, you have your DC input. This supports 12 volt or 24 volt battery systems. There's also a secondary DC port on the back of the fridge. So it's really nice to have two DC ports that are shared. Right here, you have your AC input. All the power conversion happens inside the unit. And over here, you have two USB-A ports. This allows you to charge a smart device or power a USB fan or light. These aren't really quick charge ports, but it is nice to have those on there. Now the fan and compressor on this fridge are not very loud. So let's go ahead and measure the noise from about a foot away. Now, how much power does the VL35 Pro use? Now, when the compressor's running, it pulls around 30 to 40 watts of power, but it does sit idle for quite a bit of time. So it just cycles on and off. So if you average out the power over a long period of time, this is very efficient. Now, I did four individual tests. I did two tests here in my basement at 70 degrees, one at a freezer level and one at a fridge level. And then I did two additional tests where I put this into a closet with a heater and I tested it at five degrees as a set point and 36 degrees as a set point. So I have a graph to kind of help you guys see the actual power usage numbers. So let's pop up that graph. So these are the four tests. Each one ran for 24 hours. The left-hand side are 70 degrees ambient. The right-hand side are 85 degrees ambient. Now keep in mind, the lighter green numbers are when I ran it as a fridge. The darker green numbers are when I ran it as a freezer. So kicking off the results, 70 degrees ambient, set as a fridge, it pulled 220 watt hours, or an average of nine watts. Running as a freezer at 70 degrees ambient, it pulled 450 watt hours, or an average of 19 watts. Now, when we put it into the closet where it was hotter, running it as a fridge, it pulled 380 watt hours, or an average of 16 watts, and running as a freezer, it pulled 620 watt hours, or an average of 26 watts. Now these are very efficient numbers. This is a very efficient fridge. And basically looking at these results, we can see that the hotter it is outside and the cooler you have the fridge or freezer set to, the more power it will use. Now how accurate is the actual set point versus the internal temperature on this fridge? For example, if you have it set to 36 degrees, what is the actual temperature inside? So I have a Bluetooth thermometer that I put right in the middle. And that's actually where the temperature sensor is on this fridge. So let's go ahead and see the results for the temperature accuracy. So on the screen, you have the data from both those Bluetooth thermometers. The left-hand side is the 36 degree test. The right-hand side is the five degree test. The average temperature was around 37.8 degrees with the maximum of 38.7 and the minimum of 37 degrees. So very tight consistent temperature groupings here, just a little bit above the set point. Now for the freezer results, you can see the average was around 8.5 degrees with the max around nine degrees and the minimum around 7.9 degrees. So once again, we have very consistent temperatures, but even a little bit higher than the actual set point. Now I'm fairly happy with those results. The temperature versus the set point was pretty decent. It was just a little bit higher than the set point. And that's why I always recommend to have some sort of thermometer with your fridge so you know what's going on on the inside. Every fridge is a little bit different, so if you purchase this fridge, it might behave a little bit differently. 
But what happens if your temperature is off? Well, now you know what's happening. There's a couple different ways that you can fix it. The easiest way is you just set the temperature display down two degrees and it'll be right exactly where you want it. If you want to go about the more advanced method, you can use the F1, F2, and F3 settings as I showed earlier. You can experiment with those settings to try to get it to be more accurate, but there are multiple ways to get the inside to match the actual display a little bit better. Now, I really wanted to take this fridge out on an overnighter camping trip to see how it actually performed. And right before we left on the trip, an unexpected cold front came through where it was forecasted to get super cold. So we still went, we had to completely bundle up. When we woke up in the morning, there was ice on everything. So it got down below 20 degrees at night. Well, guess what guys, inside the fridge, it stayed above 32 degrees. So it worked as an insulated box. It kept our drinks and our food from freezing. So that was pretty cool. Uh, not the best circumstances to test a fridge, but hey, at least you know it works even when it's super cold outside. Now, just as the last part of the video, I just wanna show you guys what comes in the box. You get your DC cable with the 12 volt cigarette plug. You get your AC cable. Remember, there's just an AC cable. There's no you know, power brick, so that's nice. You get an extra handle in case one breaks. You get an extra drain plug and some bumpers that go on the corner. Now, overall, the Iceco VL35 Pro has performed really well. I like the feature set for it. I like the efficiency and the durability. It's a great fridge. Now, if you wanna see how this stacks up against other fridges I've tested on the channel, if you check out my power station grading sheet, I'll have that link down in the video description. Go on the bottom and check out the separate tabs. There's a 12 volt fridge comparison tab so you can see how this stacks up against any other fridge that I've tested on the channel. It talks about the power usage numbers and goes through pricing, discount codes, and a lot of the actual specifications. So you guys might find that helpful. Now, as for price, Iceco is launching this at $569. I do have a 12% off discount code you guys can use to bring it down to around $500. So it does get a little bit more affordable there. Now you guys will have to let me know what you guys think about the Iceco VL35 Pro. I've absolutely loved the 60 liter version of this and it's great to see so many different options. They have the 35, the 45, the 60, and then they have the larger dual model options that have two individual zones. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please smash the thumbs up button if you like the data that you saw about this fridge. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll see you guys in the next video.